What's going on today, guys? Man, I'm so excited to be doing this video. Uh, thank you to drop.com for sending these two bad boys and letting me give one of these away to you lucky viewers who are looking at this video right now. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Drop. Thank you, you guys who are checking this video out. I will tell you how to enter that somewhere throughout this video. Um, just wanna let you know, this is the video. We'll be doing a giveaway. So, what are we looking at? This is the ProTech made Fear and Forge design available on drop.com Mordax. I know it's a mouthful, but um, all good things. Again, it's just uh, it's just a lot to say, but it's kind of simple. Drop.com does collaborations with these different knife designers and then they pick the best producers. And I don't know exactly what the specifications are, but they go with some of the best producers that are available today. And ProTech is certainly one of those manufacturers. So there you go, ProTech made USA in USA and Fear and Forge design. And look at this beauty. It is a button lock flipper. We have both models here. Well, it comes in like 10 different versions, but the main are the flat without milling and then the milled version. Milled version is a little bit lighter, not by a whole lot. It's by like know, half an ounce or something like that. Um, the weight with the milling is 3.6 ounces and the weight without the milling is 3.8 ounces and that's huge. I'm not saying that's a huge weight, but it is huge. That's why I love carrying this knife so much. It is extremely light for what you're getting. This is an eight and a half inch long knife. I mean, look at it filling up my whole hand here. That's amazing uh, at 3.85 or 3.6, depending on what version you go with. You can see your front finger choil there. Um, very light and they're able to do that because this is an aluminum handle it is a 60 61 t6 aluminum handle some people are for that some people are against it i don't see anything wrong with it at all it's not like it's a frame lock it's a button lock flipper they're keeping the weight down and if this was titanium it'd be twice the price i'm just I actually think Elliot over there at Fair and Forge did have a very small run of the titanium Mordaxes. The very limited, and I don't even know the price point on those. I just think that this at the price point is really hitting that sweet spot, especially when you consider that it's using CPM 20 CV, and this is on caged bearings. We're going to take it apart in a few minutes. And it's a button lock flipper that is incredibly uh, precisely machined. There's a few things to it. I'll point out right now while we're at it. Um, with your aluminum handle here, you can see they're starting with a thicker slab of aluminum here, and then it's being milled down. That is not a separate backspacer. That is two solid chunks of aluminum that have been milled down to create that backspacer. So it is an incredibly sturdy knife, side to side, up and down, very nice. Um, but usually knives, you'll see a backspacer or something there. If you're wondering what these two holes are, it is where you can slide a lanyard in and out. Um, so I don't have a lanyard on these, but that's an option, but it doesn't put a hole in the knife anywhere. You know, some have holes up here, a lanyard hole down here. I just think that's really nice how they do it. A lot of higher end knives kind of have this design right here. Another thing we're looking at right here, right off the bat, is this nice low rider clip that has a pocket milled in for the clip. What does that mean? That means that there's, when you slide this in your pocket, there's nothing to catch on. There's no screw heads to catch on. There's no pocket clip that's sticking on top of the slab to catch on. It's an incredible pocket design, very, I don't know, uh, elegant would be the word. It's just a nice way to do it. Uh, the bad thing, it is right hand carry 
tip up only. For me and about 90% of people, that's perfect. You know, a lot of us carry tip up right-handed only. And it is a right-handed button lock, so. I'm sure a left-handed person could manipulate this knife, but that's just kind of how it's designed. If you've seen there, we will get into the action. I just want to let you guys know about that handle there. Really nice. You can see how clean the front face is here with only the stop pin and the pivot and the button lock showing. There are no pins in the back here. It is screwed in through these two screws here. And the point of retention here, as far as what's holding these two slabs together, so they don't wiggle like this and get your blade play side to side. It is a uh, like only one piece here, so it's not three pieces in the back. Usually it's slab, backspacer, slab, or slab, spacer, spacer, slab. This is all integrated here. It's not an integral, but it's integrated into the handle design. So it's very sturdy how everything, and then of course, Protec here is just incredible with their milling. It is really well done from the clip to the handle to the action. And let's get into the action. This is a button lock flipper. I want to take one of these knives apart and show you what it looks like inside. But the very basics of it is that there is a spring in a milled pocket on this side of the button lock, which you can feel when you push this down and that spring is acting as the detent to let this flipper release and then also the spring on this side kicks the spring pushes its way onto the tang of the knife underneath it and then of course this is on the stop pin here so it's a very effective design a lot of automatic knives uh, use the button lock because you could mill a pocket into the aluminum. Usually most um, <laughs> most automatic knives are aluminum. You could put a pocket in there, a hole in there. This is not automatic and you cannot make it automatic and not without a lot of heavily modifying the handle. It is a completely manual knife um, with a great action. This is brand new out of the box. I never carried this. I never adjusted it. I never did anything. Let's go ahead. I guess we can get to that when we get to the blade. Wanted to show you fit and finish. Blade is dead centered. The action on this one, though, has really... This is the one I've been carrying for several weeks. I mean, incredible. Just such a fun knife to fidget with. It really is. They're, they're, um, the flipper option, I was going to say there's several ways, but really there's only two ways. If you press on the flipper, right, and then to get it to close, it's a button lock, so you press on the button, let gravity close it, and then when you let go, the detent will snap this thing into place. It's a really nice action. I kind of find it a combination a little bit of a light switch and a push button. Elliot Williams uh, with Fear and Forge is really a design genius in many ways. I want to point out a few things that really make this folder work in my opinion. Um, one, let's just start with the action. Look how he brings the flipper 90 degrees off the pivot. A lot of the flippers that have great action are using that geometry. Also, the little bit of jimping he put on there um, is just enough. It's perfect. It really is. Even the way it's shaped. So you can see it's not a complete push button. You, do, you don't pull back on it like a light switch. But you kind of, it's a combination of both. So you're kind of pushing with your finger down this way. And you can see he has that milled perfect there for that. Another thing I really wanted to point out, and this is in his design process, is exactly how this pivot is dead center of the length from here to here. What does that do, the pivot being dead center? 
Well, when this is a, in your pocket, there's nothing to catch on here. It is flush. Very flush. And when it's open, the part that was flush right here, down here, is also flush when it's at the top. Another thing while we're at the top looking here, there is no jimping. Some people are not going to be fans of that. I love that. Uh, not that I hate jimping, but I feel like a lot of manufacturers and a lot of knife designs get it wrong more than they get it right. So I am a fan of smooth designs like this. Again, it's not going to be everybody's taste, but there is no hot spots when you're using this knife with your thumb up here. Well, I find a lot of other knives can. And you're definitely not going to slip up on this knife because it has this flipper sticking out here. It really locks your hand into place. And the milled one, a little more so than the flat one. I've been asked that on Instagram when I posted these uh, knives together here. Which one is, you know, I, I was thinking about buying the milled version, but is it a hot spot versus the flat one? Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you my honest opinion. I chose, I could have picked either one of these knives to keep for myself. Um, they're both great. Um, but I chose the milled version and there's only like one small con is that the milled version can have a little bit of a hot spot here, but in real world use, and I've cut a bunch of stuff with this, I just haven't found that to be the case. It's not a problem for me at all. Not that I don't like the flat version just as much, you know, but in my opinion, um, Fear and Forge is really known, known for this milling work, carving work, and this is this screams Fear and Forge to me, and I love that. It's kind of like his stamp right on there. I understand if it's not for everybody, um, but I don't feel that it's too much of a hot spot. It hasn't been for me, and you can see all my pocket lint and stuff in here in all those holes where I've been carrying it and using it. The finish is very durable, but I do believe I have put a mark or two on it um, right there, but I did have this in my pocket and had some keys in the same pocket and was like, oh crap. So, um, I could, I don't know, maybe that's some rubbed off brass from my key or something in there. Very durable finish and, um, just really well done. Again, the button lock flipper, you can press it down and flick your wrist. There's no spring. There's no assisted action in this knife. Uh, it is on cage bearings. Again, in a couple minutes, we're going to take it apart. What a fun knife to play with. Um, for the blade, we're looking at pretty much a flat grind or a really high saber grind with a beautiful stone wash. And you can also get them in DLC coated, black DLC if you want. And for the steel, it is CPM. 20 cv uh just a beautiful steel i i did a bunch of research on this for the last several days and um what i found uh drop.com in their website says it's virtually identical to m390 um and that's kind of what i found so latrobe's 20 cv which was um i've got my notes here Carpenter acquired Latrobe and did the 204P, which was pretty much the same as Duratec 20CV. And now CPM, I don't know if there was an agreement or another purchase made. Um, but anyways, all of these steels, M390, 204P, Duratec 20CV. Did I say? Yep, M390, 204P and CPM 20 CV are all virtually identical steels. Please do not quote me, but that's what my research kind of showed me. And I don't know if it's, um, I think they're all the exact same composition, but I don't know if it's the exact same process. You know, I didn't get that far into it. If you know, please comment below and educate us on CPM 20 CV. I know it is really durable stuff. Um, I know some of the research showed that it was very durable and corrosion resistant, much like 440C. 
And I know that the 440 series steels kind of scare some people, but don't be because the M390, the CPM 20CV, Duratec 20CV, and Carpenter's 204P um, are all um, super steels. They all have great edge retention. And if you was to compare it to something like the 440C, um, these super steels, the M39, well, CPM 20CV, uh, holds a cutting edge on the Catra test something like 20 times more or something. Um, it's quite a difference. Shouldn't have smashed my nose together too much, but uh, yeah, in edge wear. I don't know. I don't know where I wrote it. Um, but anyways, extremely durable steel. It's great stuff. It is still widely used today. Um, Hinderer's knives, all of his XM18s, or most of them, are made using CPM 20CV. So if any of you guys know, I first heard of the 20CV steel um, back when Hinder was using it, you know, 10 years ago or so in his XM18s. So it's good stuff. He has switched to CPM 20CV, uh, just a very durable steel, very corrosion resistant. So that's it on that. I think we've hit most of the high things. Um, there's not really any lows. It's a button lock flipper, just a beautiful design. I love how they brought this swedge all the way down. So there's no hot spot on the edge of the spine. It's not quite rounded or crowned, um, but it does have this swedge that just sweeps the whole length of the blade. But check out where it ends, about right here at the tip. So you still have full strength in your tip there. Of course, you guys can see it's kind of a slight drop point. You've got a large belly here. It comes down to a nice little flat portion here. Fits in my hands great. Front finger choil. You can really get some work done on this knife, <laughs> with this knife. So let's go ahead and take one apart. Might as well go ahead and take this one apart. I don't want to mess with the one we're giving away. How would you win that knife? I think the easiest way to do it will be to just leave a comment below and I will put a random comment um, program. I'll figure out a way to do that on the YouTube channel. I'll make a video, we'll do the giveaway and it will randomly select a YouTube comment on this video here. But please like, comment and subscribe. Um, I will be doing the double checking to make sure that you, I can't really tell if you like the video, but I can tell if you commented, obviously, because you wouldn't win. And I can tell if you're subscribed. I should be able to. So let's go ahead and take this apart. Um, I had somebody warn me that this male pivot is machine pressed into this side of the handle. So we will not be able to take that down. Uh, I kind of know what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys exactly what we're looking at. It should be a caged bearing system with a stainless steel hardened bearing erase because this is an aluminum handled knife and the bearings would wear their way into the aluminum over time. And I believe drop.com had that listed somewhere that it is a... steel liner on the inside of that bearing so there we go let's go ahead i don't want this spring to shoot anywhere because it might it's a pretty strong spring did i not i didn't i didn't take off the stop pin if you're wondering it is a t6 for the pocket clip screws and the other body screws and then a T9 for the pivot screw. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy apart. There it is. Oh, oh. 
A little bit of an explosion there, it's okay. Here's what we have, caged bearings. I like bearings, especially on flippers. Um, the only drawback on bearing flippers, and again, I've got whole videos on this, is uh, in a sandy or a very dirty environment, they're not really recommended. But for everyday EDC, I'm not really in a sandy, dirty environment anymore. Um, back when I was customizing knives and working on them, I would notice after a day or two of sandblasting that the sand would kind of work its way in the bearing and cause a little bit of problems. Not that it wouldn't work anymore, um, but it was, you know, they needed to be cleaned after, you know, a day or two in a real dirty environment. So I would say if you're not in a real dirty environment, there is a lot of pluses, especially when you consider the action on this knife. So I'd say for 90% of people, uh, a bearing flipper is completely good to go and probably preferred if you want that very smooth press the button and the action kind of drops. Again, this is not broken as well as the other one here. So just as I suspected here, that's what we're looking at. You can see a, I guess I could pry it out of there, but there's no need to. You see the washer in there, right? Inside the milled titanium. There's no pockets on the inside of these handles. Not for the flat one either. That's why it's a little bit heavier than the milled version. You can see how that backspacer is integrated. It's all one piece. This handle starts off this thick. You can see how the lanyard hole wraps around there. That's why I really like these Knife Spelunking series. We're going to do it with a lot more knives. I just wanted to really get inside this one to show you exactly what you're getting. Let's see if that's actually a press fit. Oh, yeah. Totally press fit in there. That's great. I haven't had the action loosen up at all. So very nice. Uh, very nice on the stop pin here as well. Let's see if we can get it to focus. That's a full size stop pin. It doesn't have shoulders on it or anything. So it's not milled down on the edge. And you can see it completely fits inside the pocket there. Kind of a big deal because that is taking all of the force of this knife opening and closing. It's also a big deal to show you guys how well it's done because I don't see aluminum handles on this knife even being an issue. In my opinion, I don't even know why people talk about it. Um, yes, it's not titanium, but aluminum is a lot lighter than titanium and uh, definitely is a little easier to machine or a lot easier to machine. And when it's done right, I don't see why this uh, is not completely sufficient. Way to do a stop pin, way to do the mechanism. You've got your bearings on a hardened uh, ring in there. It's not thin like some other knives we've seen, right? We're not gonna call them out. You guys can in the comments for your comment to enter the giveaway, but I'm not going to. And then we have our spring here on our button lock. So that spring fits behind this. Goes into this pocket, right? And you can see how that pushes out. Now, a few things that we should be seeing here, and it looks like we are, is... You see how this is not a straight cylinder. This kind of has, it goes out a little, right? Do you see why it would do that? Because when it engages with this tang, it self adjusts. So should this stop pin ever slide back somehow? And it shouldn't, I don't see how it could, uh, but should it, this lock will self adjust um, over time. I, think, I actually think it comes down on this one, not up there. Stop pins up here, it's gonna come here. Another thing, let's just get a look at how freaking well Protec Design these two pieces. This is absolutely critical on a button lock flipper. 
Check out the radius on this and the radius on this. They match each other perfectly, which means for wear over time, you're not just hitting on a single portion of the blade. And the wear marks on the blade should show that as well. This is very important. I know it's, it's very nitpicky, but I think that's why a lot of you people come to my reviews. I just wanted to point it out. I mean, incredible machining here. You see how this little bit of galling here, or galling, or however you pronounce that word, is completely from this corner all the way up and around. You can see where metal hits metal, the full contact, really incredible machining. Also self-adjust, should you ever need it. Another thing that I was like, what a button lock flipper. For a button lock flipper to work, there's a detent. Check out how they figured out the detent. This button lock falls into this milled portion of the blade here. You see how that's kind of at an angle there. So when you press on the flipper, right, it's breaking the perfect amount of spring tension that's on behind this button lock. And when it breaks free, it comes on up and locks on that portion there. I'll show you on a knife that's already together. But that's exactly how it works there. And then when you press the button and you release the pressure, you have taken away any friction that is touching the blade so the blade falls into place. That's genius for another reason that maybe you guys hadn't really seen yet and I hadn't pointed out yet, is that when you press this button, your fingers are completely out of the way of the blade falling down. I don't know who would be pressing the button like this. Usually we press buttons like this, straight down. And when you hold the knife and you press straight down, it's very hard for your finger to fall in the way there. Because you kind of pinch right there. You can, I mean, I play with this knife all the time. You can press the button with your finger there and flick it open. The action is incredible. Uh, yes, you can, when you release the pressure, little wrist, and it opens, let it go, and it'll lock into place. Or you can hit the flipper with perfect, perfect detent action. Incredibly well done. I don't know if there's anything else that you guys want to see on this knife, but you can see we've taken it down. We've seen the incredible machining there. A lot of you guys may have asked the same question I did when you first heard about a button lock flipper. What's going on with the detent? It's right there. It's just so cool. Really well done. I love that they put bearings in it and they didn't mill out any pockets in the blade. There's full thickness of the tang back here at the blade. Really well done. I really um, do appreciate you guys checking out my videos. Again, make a comment below and I will put a in three weeks. So today this video should be going up October 13th. Okay. And on November 3rd in exactly three weeks, that's three weeks from now, it'll be on a Sunday. I will do the random generator. Maybe we'll do it on an iPad and I'll have it out here and we will do the giveaway. Please make sure that you're of legal age to own this knife and uh, I will send it out to you. So be able to give me a proper shipping address too. If it gets lost for any reason, I will not be able to buy you another one and uh, send it. So I need a, a proper address. I will insure it. And we will get this thing out to you. Please make sure that you are 18 years or older to enter the contest. A random comment below. Um, I would appreciate it if you kept it under like two or three comments. Please don't spam the whole entire comment section with um, comments, you know. So I just wanted to, to really thank you guys for hanging out. 
These, this video is gonna be long. This is a knife spelunking. We go inside, we look at it, look at all the details. We check out the cage bearing system. And again, just to really hit the high points, they really made a great EDC knife here. All of them, drop.com, ProTech, and Fear and Forge, um, really wonderful. They come in like 10 different variations, like milled, not milled. You can get them with the black DLC blade. Uh, you can get them in gray, black, blue, I think green, and then you can get the DLC blade or not. Um, just really incredible. I, I really, really appreciate Drop for supporting the channel. I definitely appreciate you guys for checking it out. So again, that's the, the Mordax. Wonderful. Just a wonderful knife. I love seeing how the button lock was designed and implicated here and really seeing that they all came together and really formed a really, really incredible EDC piece here. Just I'm blown away with it. I'm going to keep on carrying it until the, the next knife that I'm going to review. And that's already lined up, guys. So uh, I just stay tuned. Please subscribe, like, comment, and we will do the comments below. I'd like for you guys to be subscribed and like the video uh, to be entered in the giveaway. But again, the, the like and the subscription will be on your honor. So anyways, pick a comment below in three weeks. We'll see you November 3rd to give this very knife away. Thank you guys, see ya.